Welcome to Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machat. I have a question for you. How good are you at aviation trivia about the United States Air Force? Special thanks to viewer Joe Shank for the great idea for this presentation. Now, if you haven't played before, here's how it works. We give you a statement like this. The Convair B-58 Hustler was the Air Force's first supersonic bomber. You have to decide whether that's true or false. And in this case, it's true. The Convair B-58 was a Mach 2 aircraft that first flew in 1956. And wait a minute. Where have I seen something like this before? B-58 on the ramp, three open canopies, guys in white coveralls. Could it be? Yes, I thought so. Special shout out to Max of Max's Models and all those great glue troopers who know the answer to the question, what is that pilot standing on getting into the cockpit? If uh, you are not familiar with the U.S. Air Force, we invite you to please enjoy this presentation because we have lots of stories and new photos and new content. So uh, feel free to play along and I hope you enjoy it. Are you ready? Let's play. Murphy's Law was coined during rocket sled testing at Edwards Air Force Base, California. And that is true. In the late 1940s, the deceleration track at North Base was used for developing uh, aerophysiology uh, devices for pilot survival. And uh, they used this rocket sled in the blockhouse on one morning, uh, the launch operator flipped the switch and the rockets did not fire. He uttered the phrase, well, I guess if it can go wrong, it will go wrong. The launch operator's name, Captain Edward A. Murphy Jr. Hence, Murphy's Law. If it can go wrong, it will go wrong. The supersonic North American F-100 was the first military jet equipped with an afterburner. And that is false. That airplane was the Lockheed F-94C Starfire. You can see the aft fuselage here, quite different from the non-afterburning P-80. But the F-94C was powered by a Pratt & Whitney J-48 turbojet that produced 6,500 pounds of thrust, boosted to 8,750 pounds in afterburner, giving the jet a top speed of 640 miles per hour. Northrop's YB-35 YB flying wing, which flew in 1946, and today's Northrop B-2 stealth bomber have the exact same wingspan. And that is true. The YB-35 you see at top and the jet conversion YB-49, as well as the B-2 Spirit, all have wingspans of 172.0 feet. The only U.S. Air Force aircraft used for open sea rescue missions during the Korean War were converted World War II B-17s equipped with droppable boats. And that is false. Although there were B-17s used in that role, the airplane we're looking for here is the Grumman HU-16 Albatross Amphibian. And this is the first episode to use two model box tops, but I couldn't resist having this image for the HU-16. Saved a lot of pilots. The North American B-45 Tornado was the Air Force's first operational jet bomber, and that is true. Now, if you were thinking of the XB-43, America's first jet bomber seen here, this was actually a conversion of the Douglas XB-42 Mixmaster, but the B-45 was technically the first uh, jet bomber delivered to the new Strategic Air Command, first flew in 1948. The first non-stop around-the-world flight by jet aircraft was made in 1955 by three Boeing B-52 Strato Fortresses. And that is true. On January 18, 1957, 
three B-52Bs landed at March Air Force Base, California, seen here, after completing a 45-hour, 19-minute flight circling the globe nonstop, utilizing aerial refueling and covering a distance of 24,325 miles at an average speed of 525 miles per hour. The first jets to fly around the world nonstop. The first jet aircraft to reach Mach 1.8, nearly twice the speed of sound, was Lockheed's F-104 Starfighter. Actually, no. It was this aircraft, the North American X-10 Navajo cruise missile prototype. Five of these early aircraft were built, equipped with landing gear for recovery after testing, and uh, they reached nearly Mach 2 in 1954. The F-104 flew that year, but did not reach Mach 2 until 1956. But the X-10 made its first flight in 1953, a year earlier. In 1947, the Navy's new F-9F-2 fighter was named Panther in keeping with Grumman's famous Cats. That name was also given to the experimental Martin XB-51 Trijet Air Force bomber two years later. And that is true. Here's the Grumman Panther, and here's the Martin Panther. We're going to see this airplane again later in the program. The longest continuously produced military airplane in the world is the KC-135. And that is false. It's this airplane, the Lockheed C-130 Hercules, which made its first flight in 1954 and still in production to this day. This is the latest, the uh, C-130J, an amazing airplane. Speaking of old aircraft, five different operational U.S. Air Force aircraft types made their first flights more than 60 years ago, and that is true. We're going to show them to you from the inside out. This is the Boeing B-52 Stratofortress, 1952. As we mentioned, the Lockheed C-130, 1954. Lockheed U-2 Dragon Lady, 1955. The Boeing KC-135 Strato Tanker, uh, looking up at it from uh, a KC-10 about to refuel. In, uh, that made its first flight in 1956. And the Northrop T-38 Talon, its first flight was 1959. I took this photo from another T-38 in close formation flying with the Air Force Test Pilot School. The first man to log 100 hours of supersonic flight time was a Convair factory test pilot. And that is true, although I'll bet it's not the airplane you're thinking of. That gentleman was Beryl Erickson, Convair's chief pilot, made the first flight of the B-36 and the first flight of the B-58, in which he acquired 100 hours of supersonic flight time. The last operational member of the U.S. Air Force Century Series supersonic fighters is North American's F-107. I'm going to give you a hint. Keyword, operational. And that answer is false. The North American F-107 did fly. Three prototypes were built. They wound up flying for NASA. Very uh, beautiful, aesthetically beautiful airplanes. But they did not go into production and did not become operational. Nor did the North American XF-108 Rapier. Never made it past mock-up stage. As did the Bell XF-109 actually a project uh, labeled the D-188A, used with uh, German technology for VTOL operations. But the last operational airplane to fly as a Century Series aircraft was the McDonald F-110 Spectre. Oh, gosh, my phone's ringing. Oh, my cell phone's blowing up. Ah, there goes the fax machine. Yeah, you know what's coming. Lots of comments. The 110 became the Phantom, but what about the F-111? That's a three-digit designation. And what about the F-117 Nighthawk? Well, my answer is the 111 flew in 1964, the 117 in 1981. And when I say Century Series, we're talking about a family of supersonic fighters that flew in the 1950s. 
all this technology in just three years from 53 to 56. Really incredible. By the way, whatever happened to F-112 through F-116? Well, those numbers were used for a number of different programs, mainly the Red Eagles, which were Soviet fighters flown by the Air Force for uh, dissimilar training. And these are the aircraft listed below. The McDonnell F-4 Phantom was the first military jet with more than 5,000 units built. And that is false. The F-4 did achieve 5,195 aircraft built in its production run, but the F-86 Sabre beat that with 9,860 aircraft, although the all-time jet record is the Soviet MiG-15, which uh, was built in a number of approximately 18,000. And I say that because I checked four different sources and came up with four different numbers but they're all in the neighborhood of 18,000 jets. Many were built under license in other countries. Northrop's T-38 Talon is the only and last turbojet-powered Air Force aircraft flying today. And that is absolutely true. The T-38, called the White Rocket, powered by two General Electric J-85 turbojets, Final variants of the J-85 produced 5,000 pounds of thrust at afterburner, giving the T-38 a top speed of Mach 1.32. And this is incredible. Nearly 75,000 jet pilots were trained in T-38s since the jet entered service in 1961. Colonel Steve Canyon was a comic book and TV show pilot who was checked out in every single U.S. Air Force aircraft. And that is true. Uh, the comic book character shown here is a full bird colonel and the TV version. Uh, and if you remember the opening sequence, Lieutenant Colonel Canyon Stevenson B, serial number A0041044, will proceed to Big Thunder Air Force Base on orders. We love that show. It was on Saturday nights after Perry Como, sponsored by Chesterfield cigarettes, go figure that. But these are just some of the airplanes that Steve flew or was associated with in those episodes. Uh, these are available on DVD and uh, even some on YouTube. Uh, Steve was played by Dean Fredericks, and I can't think of an actor better suited to that role. It was just an outstanding program. Okay, now, just for fun. Here's one I've used before, but if you're new to the channel, you probably haven't seen this, so here we go. In 1956, the Air Force flew a top-secret 12-engine experimental bomber built by the Gilbert Aircraft Company and designated as the XB-120. Now, we have a just-declassified photo of this amazing airplane. You ready? There it is. Yeah, you guessed it. Not really. However... Uh, in the movie Toward the Unknown, there was a Gilbert XF-120, which uh, was actually the uh, Martin XB-51 we saw earlier. Great movie. Now, this is an actual photograph I took from another airplane. It is not Photoshop. This is the exact photo raw. You ready? Here's what we're looking at. A KC-135R refueling a B-52H, and I was in an accompanying B-52 photographing that sequence. And now the final question, fasten your seatbelts. This is gonna, has to be one of the best brain teaser questions ever. You ready? A twin engine Douglas C-47 Skytrain once flew coast to coast from the Atlantic to the Pacific on one engine. Think about that. And the answer is true. Really? Yes. The airplane looked like this. It was in the uh, early 1970s. And they were practicing engine out procedures on the Atlantic coast of Panama. They couldn't get the second engine restarted. So they flew back to Howard Air Force Base in the uh, canal zone on the Pacific coast of Panama on one engine. Yeah, I know. So there you have it, a look at uh, trivia in the United States Air Force. I hope you enjoyed it. 
And thank you so much for celebrating aviation with Mike Machat. We love bringing these episodes to you. We hope you enjoy them. And until next time, take care.